to build 100,000 council houses, uh, 50,000 affordable homes uh, for people as well. The question, the first question that everyone will ask is, where are you going to get the money to do this? Well, Ben, we've got to build these homes. If your viewers are listening to me today, most of, a, a lot of them really will either be in cramped, overcrowded, temporary housing or housing that's inadequate. The Labour government in 1945 built council housing. It was an absolute revolution for this country. And we're going to do exactly the same again because that investment, not only will the, the money pay off straight away because we'll be helping people get on and get by, but actually we'll save money on the amount of money we spend on private rental in this country and making sure that people have the housing that they require and need and, you know, that yeah. the economy works for them. We, and that will be, it's going to be so fantastic and life-changing for a lot of people. Unquestionably, there is a need for this scale of housing. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, the big concern, though, is the idea of trying to build on this scale is that it just isn't the skills out there. We would need to, ch to train up a lot more builders. We'd need to train up a lot more planners. And to get all the infrastructure into position to come up with all these tens of thousands of extra homes, it's going to take years. Well, it's an ambitious programme, but like I say, the 1945 Labour government wasn't deterred by the fact that we'd just come out of the Second World War, our infrastructure was on its knees, our country had been bombed and we were able to build council housing, build that infrastructure we needed. And that's what our programme for government is this time, whether that's through our transportation, our broadband, making sure that our business and homes have access to the latest technology, our million green industrial jobs to move our economy forward, to save the planet and have the jobs of the future, or whether that's through our housing, programme, we're going to rebuild Britain and make sure that we have the country that we need going forward to, for us to get by and to remain one of the richest countries in the world. And in order to do that, we have to invest in Britain and we're going to do that. Some of the analysis, Angela, that I've seen is that the only way you're going to be able to hit these targets, the only realistic way of hitting these targets is to force housing that's currently planned as private homes to be slated for social homes. Will you make that happen? Will you force those privately planned uh, properties to be turned into social housing in order to hit these targets? Well, we also know there's a lot of land available at the moment, brownfield as well as public land, that is not being utilised. And what we want to do is free that land up so that we can build these houses. And we want adequate housing for people. At the moment, a lot of people listening to your programme will be in inadequate housing that's not green or efficient. We're going to, you know, re-energise our homes, make sure they're efficient yeah, yeah. and that Absolutely. they're, you, uh, you know, that, they're but, fit for the 21st century, you, you... as well as building those new homes as well. But will you take some of those privately planned homes and make them social housing in order to hit these figures you, you're absolutely right there are people that are desperate to have decent social housing but how are you going to do it mm -hmm. We're going to build new council houses. That's what we're going to do. We're going to use some of our brownfield sites and our public land, and we're going to build new council housing. And we're going to build the infrastructure around these council housing so that our businesses can do well through the broadband, through the transportation. We're going to rebuild Britain, making sure we've got council housing again in this country and making sure that our communities can do well and get on um, and get by. It's a fantastic opportunity. Okay. I'm really optimistic about our future. Well, I hope you would be, because you're launching the manifesto and you and you need to be hopeful about it do you think Angela Rayner that if Britain stayed in the European Union there would be as the Lib Dems promise a remain bonus amounting to billions well, Susanna, I'm optimistic because, you know, you mentioned Europe and, you know, we've been bogged down in the Europe and whether we leave or whether we remain in Europe for a long time now. And actually, Labour's programme is not just about getting Brexit done within six months and dealing with that issue, but actually about rebuilding Britain, like I've just spoke about, but making you, sure we have that we investment stayed, in our economy the if future. If we stayed in the EU, uh, would that be better for our economy? Well, I mean, we had a referendum in this country and people chose to leave. Now, the Labour Party have said, unlike the Lib Dems, that we're not just going to ignore that referendum, is that we would get a deal when we put that back to the people within six months, either that deal or remain. I can't tell you what that deal is yet, because we haven't had the opportunity to do that. The Conservatives have failed to do that in the last three years, and we'll make sure that we do that. And, and then we'll move on and we'll get on with dealing with these issues that, that people referendum? are frustrated about. What would you vote in that referendum? At the moment, because well, you, you voted remain am i right in 2016 I'd have to see what the deal is Could, uh, okay well well i mean well, it's your leader who's got I, to go I, and I, negotiate it so you presumably you're feeling optimistic you presumably would hope that he'd he'd negotiate a really good deal yeah. so you voted uh, remain in 2016 
The Labour manifesto of 2017 promised that you would deliver what the majority voted for, which was to leave. Now, come the next referendum, would you vote to leave or would you vote to remain? Well, Susanna, I think the most important thing that you said there was that the people of this country voted to leave. We had a referendum. They made a decision. We respected the result of that referendum. People are frustrated that three years down the line, we haven't got anywhere near that yet. We've made it absolutely clear we will negotiate a deal and we'll put that deal back to the people with that or remain. We're the only political party that is given the opportunity to either remain or get an actual on, tangible you, deal. Sorry, we sorry, want to Angela get through Rayner, that, you put just it to said, bed after the last six months. You just pointed months. out that in 2016 the people voted to leave. So why are you offering them another referendum? Because what we're saying is we will negotiate a deal that respects the result of the referendum and then we will put that deal back to the people and they can decide whether they want that actual deal, which is an actual deal that they can see, or if they want to remain. And that will be the issue put to bed. The reason we're putting it back to the people is because the Conservatives have had three years. They've not been able to do that. Boris Johnson got his deal, remember, and then he collapsed Parliament and wanted this general election. He could have had that going through Parliament. He chose not to. We will get a deal. We will put it back to the people within six months and then we'll move on because I'm frustrated that yeah. things like our national health service, our council housing programme, our infrastructure, all of these things, including my national education service, by the way, yeah. which is not being spoken about, which is about the optimistic future of Britain instead of just being bogged down in Brexit Do all the time. Can you understand, though, can you understand how confusing it is from our perspective to hear what you're saying, that, that, that you know, the majority voted to leave in 2016, here you are putting another deal back, but also you not saying to us, and you would rather we leave because you want to respect that result regardless of the deal. And, and, and that you, we have had some of the shadow cabinet come out and said, yes, they would support uh, remaining because we think that's really, really important. But you're here this morning not telling us whether you believe whether we should remain or leave. And just how confusing that is, because who are people voting for? Are they going to vote for a leader in Jeremy Corbyn who, when it comes to it, actually wants to leave? Or are they going to vote for a, a, a leader who wants to stay in the EU? Well, Ben, I honestly don't know how you can still be confused about what I've just said. I've been absolutely clear that we will negotiate a deal, and we've said right from the start that that deal would put jobs, the economy, and our environment, consumer and employment protections so first. So you would vote for we'll it? We'll put that deal back to the so people that, that's within six months. So that's all we're trying months. to get at. Hang is, on, Susan, let me finish. It? If it's a we great will, deal, you, 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 you would vote for it? You just keep... You keep, saying, you keep saying you're confused, and I'm trying to clarify for your viewers out there what it is. We will put that deal back to the people within six months with that choice or to remain. And it's the people that we should be respecting, not what I decide personally. It's about making sure that the people get that opportunity to have their say and to move on finally. Because I actually think that Britain wants to move on. They want to talk about education for the kids. They want jobs and they want future and they want housing. And that's what we're going to deliver. We're going to put police back on our streets and we're going to invest in our public services. And that's the right way to go. Yeah. And we want to get rid of this constant battle about Brexit. You're not the only one. Uh, I think a lot of viewers would agree that they want to get rid of the constant <laughs> battle about Brexit. There is an issue, though, isn't there, Angela Rayner, as well, you, I'm well, sure, will, will appreciate, <laughs> about manifestos and about democracy. 2016 people voted. They thought the result would be respected. You yourself have said that's what you wanted. 2017, the manifesto said that would be respected. All of a sudden, we're in 2019, you have a new manifesto and a completely different policy. One of your candidates, Jess Phillips, um, Labour Party member, uh, said this when she talked to us about political general election manifesto pledges. Literally never, no one has ever said to me, but you, you know, you said in your manifesto, which I very much doubt many people... So should we take no notice of manifestos? To be perfectly honest, there, uh, I think that there is a, an argument to be said that you can never, ever deliver all of those things that you're pretending that you can deliver when you go to the electorate. And that, in reality, things change. Globally, things change mm. and situations change, facts change. You, you have to, as a That's politician... That's incredibly honest, Esther, here it's, it's, this morning, that you're saying don't trust what's in a manifesto because, let's be honest, we can't deliver it. Well, it, not in all cases. Yeah. Are these things you're pretending to deliver that we shouldn't believe in? 
No, Labour's got a track record of delivering. Like I say, the 1945 Labour government delivered for the country when it needed it the most. And in the generation of my generation, I was, you know, I was a young mum at 16 in 1996, and I was, I had the council house waiting for me to help me. I was able to get on back into secondary education. I didn't have to worry about tuition fees at the time. I had a national health service that was there for me, and that's what I want for everyone of this country. Again, you know, and Labour does deliver when we're in power, and that's what we'll do again because we're ambitious about these things we're responsible about it and we will deliver for the people of this country we'll move on from brexit and we'll make sure that actually people have hope and aspirations again and I that's feel what like, i'm really i feel like you're about. directly I talking to uh, i feel like you're directly talking to jess phillips one of your candidates this morning just before we let you go angela Rayner, oh, um, I, I talk to jess all the time she's great <laughs> well except that she's basically undermining manifesto pledges which is probably not that helpful today when you're launching your manifesto well, no, I think what she's doing, she's pointing out that the Conservatives in 2016 have been in power. They, bung, you know, bung the DUP a load of money so uh, that they could get Angela a majority Rennie, and they respect, failed to deliver I Brexit or anything else in their manifesto. I don't think she was talking about the Conservatives. <laughs> Just before we let you go... Well, um, I'll, I'll remind point. you of that anyway. OK. Um, <laughs> good point. Uh, during the leaders' debate, both leaders were asked about the monarchy and whether it's fit for purpose. Um, we now know that Prince Andrew is stepping down. Um, what do you make of what has been happening? Well, I think it's right that Prince Andrew has stepped down, and I think, you know, the Queen is, you know, many people watching this programme, you know, our Queen has been there. She's been there all the way through my life, really, and we've got to make sure that this system's in place that means that everyone is accountable and nobody's above the law. Do you think the monarchy has been damaged by this? No, because I think the Queen's acted with integrity, actually, and I think, you know, um, what's happened and the statement that's been made afterwards um, was very important to be made. But I do think we've got to start looking at how powerful people and institutions have been able to ride roughshod, really, over victims and over people who should have a say, and that the law should apply equally to everybody, and people have to have faith in the processes for that to happen. And whether that's through our monarchy or whether that's through other inst institutions and other organisations, we have to make sure that they are accountable. Yeah.